Can you please tell us your name and where you're from? My name is Myra Molina, and I'm from the Tri-Cities area. And Myra, can you please tell us the testimony that you have to share with the congregation today? Um, I was healed from a sickness that I've had since 2012. Uh, so pretty much just the background, in March 2012, there was, I woke up and there was a lump on my right breast. And can I borrow this? There was a lump on my right breast, and I didn't think much of it. You know, I'm pretty healthy, and I was very young. And, you know, I just let it go. Within a week, my breast grew in size. It was swollen. It was red. It was really tender, and I was beginning to get these sharp, shocking, stabbing pains. And I finally walked into the doctor, a walk-in clinic. They couldn't do anything for me. They said I needed to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and they said, you know, just here's pain medication. You need to go see a specialist. So Monday morning came, the specialist looked at it and said, it's an infection, gave me a dose of antibiotics, but also said, this week we need to go in and remove the mass. So come two days later, he went in there, removed the mass, and a couple days later it came back again. So yet again, gave me another antibiotics, went in, removed it. Every time he would go in and remove it, he wouldn't stitch up the wound. It was left open so it can heal from the inside out. And when it was left open, it had to be stuffed with a gauze, a con gal, so the width of a shoelace. You just stuff it in there and take it out. My husband was left to change this for me twice a day, one in the morning, one at night. It was the most excruciating pain ever. And, you know, within a couple months, it wouldn't clear up. It kept coming back. Finally, this doctor said, you know what, I don't think it's an infection. You got to go see another, another specialist. Here I go to see another doctor. Right when she saw it, she said, you have the symptoms of breast cancer. You know, inflammatory breast cancer, also known as a silent killer. And um, so she, she said she had to go back in and cut me open again you know, to test it. So once again, I was cut open, took a biopsy, and you know, I didn't have cancer. I didn't have an infection, yet they didn't know what it was. They didn't know what it was, how I got it, anything like that. So she kept just going back in there and removing, leaving it open, stuffing it, leaving it open, stuffing it. And, you know, I, I, I was just really frustrated and really hurt. And at that point, I had given up. I had given up hope. I, I just, you know, I was in so much pain. I, I gave up. I literally gave up. And I was getting unexplained bruising on my legs. You know, my hair was falling out. Of course, it wasn't like chunks, but it was enough for me to notice. Uh, at that point, you know, I told her I can't do this anymore. She said, well, you're best off getting a mastectomy, you know, getting it all removed. I told her, no, I mean, I'm, I'm too young to have it removed. So she ended up talking to the board, the breast board, her colleagues, and they finally found something that was similar to what I had. And she said that steroids was the only thing that could, that, that could pretty much just have it under control. She said, I had idiopathic granulomatous mastitis. In other words, it's an unknown disease. And she said there was only a few hundred cases worldwide. And here in the Tri-Cities, it's really rare. So she gave me, she sent me to another specialist. And this specialist gave me a high dose of steroids. And I was to be a long-term user. With these steroids, you know, there's a lot of side effects because of it. it's, a, it's a potent drug. So he gave me, or she gave me, other medication for the side effects of the steroids. And yet another medication for the side effects of those medications. So... Um, on top of that with vitamins and calcium and whatnot, you know, and she kept, finally, it was May of 2013 when they said that I was in remission. So pretty much, you know, it didn't flare up. I was good. That was until October of last year, so three months ago. You know, I had, it was a week after I gave birth, and I, I noticed the lump again. It was there. So, I mean, I, I've been coming to this church. I've seen the testimonies, and, but... You know, the devil really knows when you're vulnerable, when he can get into you. So he came in, and I started questioning God, you know, why me, and why again, and why now? You know, why, why, why? So I was complaining instead of praying. And I kept complaining, and I'd go to the doctor. I had to go to the doctor again, and this time they went into the office, and they had to do the same thing, remove it. And it was the week of Thanksgiving, and the day before Thanksgiving, I had to go back again because it flared up. I mean, it wasn't in under control, and I kept complaining instead of praying. So finally, I went in there, and she said, you know, she, she told me, she's like, sit, sit on your hands, you know, sit on top of your hands, or put your hands on your knees, sit on your hands, squeeze the pillow with your knees, 
because the numbing medication will probably not work because of your skin being so destroyed already. Sure enough, I felt it, I felt everything. She had to stitch a tube in there, not close it, stitch the tube again. And I walked out thinking to myself, like, I have came to church, I have believed, I have seen testimonies. So what went wrong? What am I doing wrong? And I went home and I started praying. And it was funny because I was, I guess it's not funny. But I kept praying and I'm saying, you know, God, you know me. You know what I'm going through. You know the pain I'm going through. So just heal me. And that was it. I mean, I didn't really, I, I was angry. And at that moment, my, you know, I kind of got an answer. He said, I know you. I'm your creator. I know the pain you're going through, but do you know me? You know, it's like, do you know me? It, it's like I had forgotten that he is the doctor of all doctors. So I, you know, I started praying. At that point, I started praying, you know, this isn't going to take over two years of my life anymore, two years of my children's life. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't hug my children. I couldn't hug my husband. I couldn't do anything. So I started praying, and I started praying bold, precise prayers, you know, like, heal me, and I need to be healed, not just cope with the pain, but remove the pain, you know, in this tube that when I go in, you know, let it loose itself, not, not be as painful, you know, just remove it all without any pain, and that's how I was. I went into the doctor, and she, all she did was she opened it up, clipped a little bit, and everything just it went away, it loose itself. So I didn't feel anything. I remember I sent a text to my leader, my home group leader, and um, some other leaders in, in the church, and I said, I, I, I prayed, and they, they were answered. You know, it wasn't a coincidence. It was an answered prayer. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So you had mentioned that this mass had come back in October of 2014 and that you were experiencing that pain. Can you tell us, what did you do as you began to, as your faith began to stir up, what did you do um, when you received that prayer? God can use any medium to express himself. In the Bible, we know that Jesus Christ used handkerchiefs, the shadow of his apostles, to heal and deliver those who were in their midst. And we know that Jesus Christ is still using different mediums to heal and deliver people and to set the captives free. And this morning, we see that Jesus Christ is using the medium of the anointing water to set the captives free. It was November. You know, I knew I couldn't do it by myself. So I came in November, and I was in the prayer line. And when I was in the prayer line, you know, as most of you come in, you, you want a healing, you want a breakthrough, and that's what I came looking for. I didn't come out and, you know, did the whole, I didn't feel anything when I was there, but I kept myself, you know, I'm going to be healed, I'm in faith, I'm the next testimony. So you don't have to feel anything in the moment, you know, there's nothing that's going to come out or anything, but you just need to stay in faith, you know, stay in faith that you will be healed. So. And after you received that prayer, how long was it um, beyond that point that you began to um, not feel the pain anymore? Well, I came to the November prayer line. I went in, and that's when I still had the tube in in the prayer line. I went to get it removed. About two weeks in December, into December, I noticed that I, was, I wasn't in pain at all. I wasn't getting these stabbing pains, and it was healed. The lump wasn't coming back, and this is without any medication anymore. You know, I was, I was completely healed, and I knew that, you know, it wasn't just because, it, like I said, it's a coincidence. You know, it wasn't like that. You know, I was in the November prayer line, and two weeks into it, I'm fine. Now I'm fine. I don't have any pain either. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And so now, Myra, do you have any scarring, anything like that? And what can you do now that you couldn't do before? The past surgeries that I've had, you know, a couple, five, six, you could see the scars. It's noticeable. This time around, there's no noticeable scar. There's no noticeable scar at all. Um, in, in my advice uh, for anybody that's here for the prayer line is keep yourself in faith. Know that you, if, you're, if you have a lingering sickness, some breakthrough that, you know, for weeks, months, years, just know that today is the day. You know, that just keep yourself in faith. You know. Amen, amen. What a wonderful miracle.